Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with hosts Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, and Carl Polacek. Produced by Kernan Consulting and for the international MSP community, we are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. All right, everybody, welcome back to the SMB Community Podcast. This is James Kernan here with my superstar friend, Amy Babinchek. Hey, Amy, how are you doing? Doing great, James. How are you? Doing fantastic. Doing well, doing well. Uh, so lots to talk about today. I'm excited. We've got all sorts of things. But um, first and foremost, how was your weekend? Anything exciting? Uh, you know, I just spent my weekend at home uh you know usually it's summertime and i go to the boat but this weekend i was home and one of my goals was to try to figure out how to get the chipmunks from nibbling on my patch of mushrooms that i'm growing <laughs> and uh it's a new thing for me in the in the garden I, I like to garden and this year i actually seeded an area with mushroom spore and it's been really cool to eat mushrooms out of your own backyard, but the turns out chipmunks really like them too. <laughs> hmm. Wow. You got to fight them off. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, I had a fun weekend. It was a uh, nice weather. We were just talking about the weather. So good weather. And I had my high school reunion. So oh. uh, it's interesting for all the listeners out there, you know, do you attend your high school reunions? Um, you and, know, my high I school reunion was just recently too. It was a, it was a big number. And uh, um, I didn't go because I'm not a person that sort of, I didn't really maintain those relationships over the years. So I didn't go, but it, you know, it's on Facebook. So I sort of watched it happen. And um, sure enough, when I saw the photos, I would not recognize any of those old people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, uh, that is actually, actually true. So um, I felt like a politician at the event because I was I had like 150 unmeaningful conversations, just really quick, shake hands, kiss the baby and move yeah. on. <laughs> and it was one after the other. It was so it, it was a lot of fun. I had more. I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would. But uh, it was just busy. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm glad I'm back to work so I can recuperate and rest. But uh because it was a couple days of of uh, festivities. So anyway, I think those are good things. And, and as it relates, you know, I've got a couple follow-up meetings with people uh, this week that I wanted to connect to that I thought would be good to reconnect with for business purposes. Yeah. So uh, I'm always thinking of of networking and, and business as well, even though that was more pleasure. Mm -hmm. So what's happening, what's happening uh, this um uh, anything exciting last week or anything this week? What, what's coming up for you? Well, you know, I am trying to dive into AI and I have found some really fun and interesting ways to sort of, you know, ask it stuff and get it to do things. But um, I am actually trying to work on a project now that it doesn't seem to want to do. And that is to actually reliably produce some content for me based on sources that I pointed to hmm. and um, I'm really really struggling with it so uh, you know so AI can do some stuff and if you've seen my new uh, headshot that's in an AI assisted headshot um, oh. and I've been getting tons of compliments on it so um, so it seems to do a good job with with that um, but, you know, as far as being, you know, being my pal and going out and doing some work for me, I'm still finding it wanting. So, but I'm so going to keep poking at it. I think, I think the listeners are going to want to know. So what site did you use to get your AI assisted uh, updated headshot? Uh, it's called um, Sect AI. And uh, I'll send I'll send a link over so we can put it in the we can put it in the show notes um, and I'll send you a link. Actually, I, I wrote an article about um, uh, you know three three things to try in in AI to sort of get yourself started in in using hmm. it. So um, I'll put a link I'll put a link over um, in our show notes for that too. 
Yeah, yeah, I'd love to love to read that. That's uh, something I'm still kind of playing around with, but I haven't uh, I haven't really done much on that other than just being kind of general topic based. So uh, you're you're a lot deeper into it than I am. So I'd love to check that out. Cool. Um, all right. Well, it wasn't too, you know, I, I, I was busy with social activities, uh, busy work calendar right now. Fortunately, I don't have any travels. So uh, my week last week and my week this week will just be kind of heads down, uh, busy with, with clients um, and some opportunities. So I don't really have anything exciting to report. But uh, so why don't we dive over to MSP question of the week? Listen to this. So the question of the week is, what the heck is EOS? Okay, what the heck is EOS? So for those of you who don't know, EOS means Entrepreneur's Operating System. And EOS is a, a business blueprint that came from a book called Traction that Gino Wickman wrote probably about 12 years ago. So for you- I was, was going to ask you if that's a trademarked- acronym eos is that something that, that he created i i think it is and he created but when when you really think about it it's just kind of simple business logic you know it's uh you know forming your leadership team you know setting goals and expectations and writing having a weekly cadence of a meeting like a, an agenda imagine that having an agenda for a leadership meeting and then kind of running it uh, with the dashboard, you know, goals and KPIs so you can see if you're on track with your goals, yes or no. Uh, the the process is maybe a little unique of how they've kind of put that together. But uh, I'll tell you the truth. I remember getting the book as a gift, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. So it'd been out a little bit. It was, I think it was one of those books that just kind of slowly became popular as people started reading it. And and to be transparent, I, I got it as a gift, threw it on the nightstand, started skimming through it, and it just didn't click. So, and I'm a numbers guy, which is kind of funny, but the stories in the book just didn't click with me. So I put it down. And it wasn't until a couple of years later when the book really started taking off, there was another version of the book that came out and it was called What the Heck is EOS? And that was the cliff note version, the you know, less pages, bigger font, so a much easier read. Those are my favorites. Uh, but it was it, it was kind of minus all the side stories in the hoopla. And it was just more of the facts about what EOS is and what the process looked like. And I remember the way my brain works is I, I looked at that and I kind of broke it down into 12 exercises. And it was like, um, here's the process. And the concept as an EOS implementer or an EOS coach, and I've been through a lot of the training because so I've taken clients through this process, but um, um, the, the way you're supposed to do it is take these exercises and run a workshop with the leadership team for eight to 10 hours on a Saturday. Ooh. And I, I don't know about you, Amy, but, you know, my... Uh, you know, I work hard, play hard. I, my My weekend time is very valuable. So... Not that I don't love my coworkers, but uh, you know, being cooped up in a stuffy room doing business exercises all day Saturday is not my idea of fun. So the idea I had was I'm I'm going to break it down into one hour exercises and do it over a twelve week period with the leadership team, and you know I've got clients all around North America, so I just do these over Zoom. And the EOS like exercises were. Uh, you know, building, it's basically building out your business plan. Uh, and I thought that format worked a lot better as opposed to, you know, trying to do it all over one weekend. It also gives you a time to kind of get to know the leaders, the leaders kind of be able to feel like they have a voice and there's kind of a bonding uh, that takes place over that, that time frame. So anyway, that's uh, it's a little bit more on EOS and, what EOS is, and then it's kind of the process that that I like following through. Do you? So I don't I don't know if you ever read the book, but uh, I'm sure you've heard about it. But what are your thoughts on on EOS? I have I have heard of it. So I've heard several people speak about it. So I feel like I have a little bit of familiarity, not to your extent, of course. But um, I know I would find it difficult to absorb 
eight to 10 hours of material in <laughs> one sitting. Yeah. You know, if it's, if you're doing something really valuable to you after two to three hours, your brain is going to be full, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully the, hopefully the wheels are turning and you're, you're, you know, visualizing how you're going to implement these things in your business and, um, you know, the brain's going to fill up pretty quick. So breaking that down s sounds like a great idea to give people a chance to digest and implement and come back and have questions on it and, you know, really make it a meaningful process. But I, I do like the idea. Um, many people struggle with figuring out how to run their business, right? They've mm -hmm. never... Nobody's ever run a business before. Usually when they start a business, they, right. They start a business, but they don't have experience in running one. Right. And, you know, everyone sort of makes it up along the way, but if you have a nice blueprint to follow, many, many people like a, a blueprint to follow, then um, it gives you that, gives them more of a sense of confidence when you're moving, moving through the business. Yeah, exactly. Because it's that that blueprint. Hundreds of thousands of businesses have adopted that that structure. You know, small businesses, mid-sized businesses. I mean, the largest client I took through this was a a very fast-growing technology company. They had five super Type A personalities. Uh, felt like I was herding cats on on the uh, the meetings, but they were over five hundred million. And they, you know, truth be told, I won't name names, but they didn't have a business plan. Uh, they had a strong culture. It was work hard, you know, play hard, uh, some just dynamic people in their leadership team and their company, but they were growing like crazy. But that's a perfect example of you just need structure. You need structure and accountability and transparency uh, from the leadership team down. So uh, anyway, that I love taking people through that. Because it's an eye-opening experience uh, when people get it, and then they can, uh, you know, takes about twelve weeks to do the exercises. Then we do a presentation back to the entire company, and I'm involved. and And my goal is really to lift the leadership team up on a pedestal and share, hey, here's where the company is going, and more importantly, here's where you fit in. You know, here's what the goals are, but here's how you're going to contribute. Let's go have fun. And here's the structure of our meetings moving forward. Here's what's expected of us. So I always love doing that. And then, um, you know, sit in on leadership meetings here and there and kind of take them, you know, check in every quarter, make sure they update things every year. Uh, so that's uh, that's fun. And I've seen it work really, really well uh, for businesses uh, that are struggling. So anyway, check that out. Read that book. Uh, to me, the favorite book is that What the Heck is EOS? Because that's the Cliff Note version, but just the book Traction. It's it's a good one. If you haven't read it yet, you you should try to do that. All right. And uh, this week, we had five minutes with a smart person. We had uh, Miss Lisa Shore of Shore Success, uh, more of a branding, uh, soft skills person. And, and Amy, you'll, you'll love this interview because we, we talked a lot about the soft skills, communication skills. And she kind of started off the segment by sharing a story about um, her dispatcher. So an MSP, recovering MSP, like all of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, her dispatcher uh, had a bad phone call with a client. And then a client had been with them for 10 years, a big client. And then uh, Lisa gets a phone call and just says, hey, listen, you know, I've been a client for 10 years, but I'm leaving you. I'm tired of not feeling important. And, uh, you know, I just had a call with your dispatcher and didn't go the way I wanted. And that was just icing on the cake, but all these other things leading up to that. But it really related back to how you talk to people. And we've talked about body language and, you know, introverts and extroverts and, and just simple human being uh, communication skills and what people are comfortable with or not. And Lisa... Uh, suffered through that and ended up selling the business and then turned right around and opened up um, a training company that works with leadership teams and works with staffs to improve their soft skills. This podcast is sponsored by the Kearney Consulting's Millionaire Mastermind Roadshow. 
Get the answers you need to grow your business guaranteed. This MSP Business Owner Conference is two full days of powerful information, instruction, and action to show you how to thrive in this troubled economy. Join us for an action-packed event in Scottsdale, Arizona on September 28th and 29th and enjoy golf, casino, and the spa experience at the Lavish Talking Stick Resort. More information in the show notes. All right, everybody, welcome back to the SMB Community Podcast. This is James Kernan with Kernan Consulting, and I am here with a very, very dear friend and special guest, Lisa Shore of Shore Success. Listeners, you've got a special treat with Lisa. Uh, many of you probably already know her or seen her speak at industry events around the country. Uh, she's got some events coming up here soon that you'll see her at. We'll talk about that a little later, but... Uh, Anyway, recently I've gotten to know Lisa a little bit better, and I really, really impressed with her story and what she's put together and what Shore Success does. So I've asked her to come on the program today and share a little bit about that. So before we talk about your business and what you're doing today, Lisa, let's go back in time a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about your history and how you got into the industry. So I, my degree is in marketing. And mm -hmm. I, and so I was working in Boston. I'm a New Englander. I live in Rhode Island and I was working in Boston, selling books for a publishing house and traveling, doing trade shows. And then I met my husband and uh, we were a blind date and he's from Rhode Island. And he interestingly had a very small IT business. And wow. so we met, it was meant to be and he's like oh you're cute and you do marketing let's get married <laughs> hey <laughs> and by the way i've got this it business and uh, <laughs> so and so that's now over 24 married 23 years but i was literally creating brochures and and learning how to build a website for uh, our tech business formerly called pc troubleshooters but i rebranded oh. us to secure future tech solutions. So PC okay. Troubleshooters was great for a while, but right. then managed services happened and no, we, we, don't, we do more than just fix PCs. So we right. needed a name to fit it. So I've been hanging out in this industry now for quarter of a century, imagine. Oh, right. <laughs> wow, so you must've started in the industry when you were five. That's right, so, that, thank you. Yes, you're... you know, you know. So <laughs> you know, coloring my hair for every four weeks. It's okay. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So uh, that's fantastic. I, I didn't know all the background there. So you guys uh, formed Shore Success and tell us just high, high level, tell us a little bit more about Shore Success and what you guys do. So for, we'll talk a little bit about how Shore Success was born, but Shore Success is an image and brand consulting and coaching business. So yeah. I, what I like to say, I like to polish and prepare IT professionals for any scenario that comes up, whether so if, whether they need to dress for a presentation or they need to learn how to use and vary your voice or whether you're on site fixing a client's issue and you're and you need to look the part, you need to sound the part, you need to learn strategies to build relationships. How do you do that or internally with your culture? How do you communicate as a team? How do you appreciate and learn and value your brand and, mm -hmm. and value your employees? And how, and so that's it's all centered around the human side of communication. And you told me a story that made me fall out of my chair. So hopefully that won't happen again. I'll brace myself. But <laughs> tell everybody a little bit more of that story about your dispatcher when you were running your own MSP. Oh, so this is really the foundation of where Shore Success began. So my MSP had a dispatcher and we answered calls. We knew how to create tickets. But the one thing we didn't know how to do and we didn't know it until we got fired was how to make our clients and those and our prospects calling in feel, there's that word again, James, feel yeah. important. Feel yes. like their needs are urgent. Feel like they're friends of ours. We weren't using names. We weren't. So we had a client of 10 years, a car dealership, over 10,000 in reoccurring revenue a year. 
fire us. And the icing on the cake wasn't the only reason, but the real icing on the cake that they were just like, I'm done, was they said, every time I call, you act as if you have no idea who I am. Mm. And I was like, call? Really? We're written up in magazines, PC World Magazine. I got two articles in PC World Magazine, all the yeah. local Rhode Island business magazines. I've got articles on TV. Our engineers are all certified for everything we needed. But our phone skills are what got us fired. Mm. And so that was, for me as a marketer, a wake-up call that, oh, it's not that. It's 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 not the technical side that we need to think about. It's the soft skills and it's the yeah. communication and how we build that brand relationship and how do you build brand loyalty? We didn't pay attention to this and I didn't know how to pay attention to this until I started researching our image and I was Googling image and what does this mean? And so I then received intensive training throughout our country and really globally because I'm a member of the Association of Image Consultants International. And we, this is all we talk about now. We talk about mm -hmm. nonverbal behavior, of course, appearance. You know, I thought about what was I going to wear today just in case I knew it was a podcast, but what if there were going to be photos or snippets or what was I yeah. going to look like? And, you know, those are all fashion goals. We have to think about that either distract or build credibility. And we there need was, to think about that. I'm going to age myself again. I, I <laughs> do this all too often, but there was a book years ago that I read that I thought was amazing um, called Dress for Success. And it was just like what you're talking about. You don't learn this in college. You don't learn this in high school. And you really don't even learn it through the, the school of hard knocks. I read this book and I remember being a young executive in the technology field years ago. And I read that book, Lisa, and it motivated me to like overdress for all my meetings because it. I it gave me confidence, but I wanted to set my brand apart from everybody else wearing polo shirts and jeans. And it made me feel older and more mature. Isn't that funny? So I always wore a suit or at least a sport coat because I wanted to, you know, if we're going to charge higher rates than everybody else, I need to look the part. And if I'm going to be a young executive, I wanted to look the part. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, and I still talk about that today, but your appearance as part of your brand, I mean, your appearance and how you um, not just speak to people, uh, your tone of voice, your body language, but but the physical clothing, your grooming right? Mm -hmm. All those things are really important as it relates back to your, the success of your company. 100%. So. I encourage everybody to research the sign, the term enclosed cognition. So there's mm. a term there's Northwestern university did a study back in 2012. And I encourage everybody to read about it. And it, it, it was revolving around a doctor or white lab coat. One group was told they were Doctors, one group was told they were painters, and one group only looked at the coat, and but they were told, you know, what their profession was. And it was amazing yeah. how it impacted how they scored on the assessments. And so enclosed cognition is was one of the first studies that validated what you were saying, James, and that mm -hmm. there is studies that show clothing impacts the way we feel about ourselves and the way that we perform the way that mm -hmm. we think. So yep. it's in this hybrid environment that we're in right now, it's challenging because we're home, so we're comfortable, but does that also impact the quality of work we're delivering as well as our communication skills? And I'm mm -hmm. gonna be a little controversial here and say yes. So <laughs> so I, I wonder how many out there who are listening to this podcast can relate to this one. So. Mm -hmm. We had an engineer who was very, was our top engineer, very tech savvy, very knowledgeable. <clears throat> we assigned him to a client that had a more sophisticated network and the client called. So after over a period of time, I don't remember how much time, but over a period of time, the client called and said, please don't send that engineer back. We were like, what, why? <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Why? And they said, and they literally said, 
because he makes me feel stupid every time I talk to him. Mm. And we were like, I'm so, I felt horrible. I'm like, you feel stupid. Like, what is he saying? It's his tone. He speaks yeah. down to me. He's condescending toward me. He's, and so, and I said, and he's like, I want that. And so the client knew a few of our engineers because sometimes that one engineer wasn't available, but he was the lead. Mm -hmm. I want that engineer instead, but that engineer doesn't know your network the same. And they said, it's all right. He'll learn it. I can talk to him. We're friends. You know, we're friendly where he makes me feel like, you know, at ease that engineer don't send him back. Don't send him back. And to be honest, if we're really going to do a mea culpa here, no one in our company really wanted to call him either that particular engineer, because we were going to get a snarky response or some sort of a tone and none of us want. And so again, I should have, that was a red flag, but yeah. thankfully, I, I took notes and I created sure success because of those circumstances. Well, that's, that's amazing. And those are two powerful examples of what happens when you don't properly train your people, Correct. right? No training. Cause you, you could work your way through that. We all learned through experiences and through coaching, consulting, training classes, you know, who we are today, you know, the soft skills, but it, it's, that's really what sure success does. It's those soft skills, but you do so many other things. Can you elaborate a little bit more on, on your uh, firm? Absolutely. So I can coach people on apps, communication, team communication. We can shop together and do a professional wardrobe audit. We can talk about presentation skills. You have a cybersecurity talk to deliver. Mm -hmm. How do you engage your audience? First of all, how do you physically walk into the room and have a strong, what we say in the image industry, executive presence? You walk mm -hmm. into the room and you own the room and not demand attention, but you command it because you look the part, you look, your, your nonverbal behavior is confident, you're Clothing is appropriate for that particular industry or that talk. Your voice is varied. So if you listen to the way that I'm speaking to you, James, I'm I'm up or I'm down. When I was talking about the engineer, don't send mm -hmm. it. Notice how I vary my voice to sound engaging, to also demonstrate power in some areas, disappointment in some areas, urgency in some areas. So we can do all that. I also do a lot of phone skills training and I help companies yeah. write scripts, actual scripts. And I coach to those scripts. We do a lot of role playing and we coach to vocals and, okay, now I want you to say it this way, a little bit differently this way. And, and so that way, when a hot lead calls in, they're ready. They know how to handle a lead. They know how to make a client or a prospect feel wanted, interested, yeah. and welcome. So phone skills has become a huge part of, in it, especially in the MSP community, the phones are the number one tool, honestly, in our industry as a service yeah. delivery. So you, it's the phones. You, you said something really important in that first story, and it really resonates with the services that you offer. It's how you make the other person feel. I don't know about you, Lisa. I want to hang out with positive people that make me feel better at the end of the day. The world's uh, hard enough, right? Right. 100%. Circle of influence. Who's in it? Top yeah. five people. Are they bringing you up or are they bringing you down? Are they credibility builders or are they credibility crushers is what I say. So. <laughs> well said. Well said. I love it. I love it. So thanks for sharing a little bit more about the company. So what's next for you? What, what's coming up here over the next quarter? Are you speaking at any events? I sure am. I, that's really the best way for me to get build awareness and marketing as a marketer, right? I have to think about where my target audience is and how do I build it. Getting on yep. the stage is my best opportunity. So I will be at Channel Pro SMB Forum in, they say Boston, but it's really Newton, Massachusetts. I will be there next month, September 7th. I'm actually speaking twice. One, I will be sharing five strategies to share with your team on how to ask soft skills questions. And we're going to actually do a role play example together. And then, then I'll be speaking on the stage the next day as a panelist 
on reoccurring services. You'll also see me there in uh, in Atlanta. They have another one in Atlanta coming up in October. I'll be there okay. trying to think. Of my And I'll be at DattoCon. So hoping to get on the stage. We'll see. Busy, busy, busy. Well, I'm going to try to twist your arm and see if I can get you out to Newport Beach in December for the Mastermind Live event. Because uh, okay. I love what you have to say and, and educate and motivate uh, the attendees of that conference uh, or maybe Q1 as well. So we'd love to have you. Well, hey, um, before we adjourn, let everybody know what's the best way to get in touch with you. Hop over to my website, suresuccess.com, S-H-O-R-R, success.com. Right on the homepage, top one third is a calendar link to me. Jump on my Calendly, pick a date. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. If the soft skills and you've got engineers or you, your brand is the bottleneck to your growth, that's what I'm here for. Let me help you. All right. Fantastic. Lisa, so good to see you. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom uh, with everybody. Hey, before we adjourn, one last thing, any final words of wisdom, any other things that you want to share that can help everybody uh, make today better? I want everybody to ask, why do clients hire me? Why am I getting hired? And the answer then say, how am I being perceived? So why are people hiring me? Why do clients hire you? And that question is, it's not just bells and whistles in the technology world. It's not just the bells and whistles. It's really how, as we started, kind of like a full circle here, how you make people feel. So remember mm -hmm. to make people feel welcome, wanted, empathetic. We just want to be heard, understood, and really part of the community and part of that family. So then the technology comes after. So yep. I hope everybody just makes everybody feel good today. Say something positive. I'm yeah. so grateful to you, James. You're an amazing person in our industry, such a strong brand, and I'm thrilled to be aligned with you. I found that um, writing skills are so important for techs. Uh, yeah. You know, because they're often they're often writing emails to clients about about something, and uh, so many of them don't have that skill when they when they come to us. So we've we've had you know I've had over the years to work with people on on their writing, and some of them you know okay you know you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna write your email, you're gonna send it to me before it goes out because <laughs> your sentences don't make any sense. They're not grammatically correct <laughs> they're not right and we just we just work at it until finally they're able to to write an email that a, another person can read yeah and um it, it's the same thing for communication skills i've often said that all business problems are communication problems mm -hmm. right it's it's usually never that that my staff isn't trying to do a good job or think that they're they're doing the right thing. It's that they're not communicating it in the right way so that the customer can understand. Yeah. And uh, you know, you can can solve all kinds of problems in your business with with good communication. Yeah. And it and then communication's a two-way street, right? It's just not the employees and how they're communicating out. You know, it's it's how we as leadership and management are communicating with our staff as well. And it kind of goes, to me, it goes both ways, up and down the org chart. Uh, she had a, a second story that floored me, and I think all of us can relate to this. She said her, her number one uh, most talented engineer was like a high-end level three person, just a superstar. And just during normal communications with clients, just kind of talks down to them a little bit. And she'd gotten another complaint from one of her other big clients that just say, hey, I'm tired of talking. I don't want to talk to this engineer anymore. She's like, well, what, what are you saying? He's my best engineer. It's like, he just doesn't treat me with respect. He's always condescending, makes me feel like an idiot. And uh, I mean, think of how many times <clears throat> we've spoken to someone like that in the technology industry, you know, and half the time they don't know they're doing it, but that's right. just the way they are. And we need to coach people through those types of things and make sure they're not doing it because uh, it's communication is critical. Yep. I, I, yep. I completely agree. Now I, I will just add though, that, um, you know, there, 
the customer is not necessarily always right. There have been few, I'm thinking of two incidents in particular, where I have had to defend my staff, you know, to a client, mm -hmm. right? It, you know, you will not treat my people that way, right? They're as frustrated sometimes and they want to take it out on somebody. And, yeah. you know, well, you you won't treat my people like that, right? Yeah. If that's that's what you're going to be, then you're not going to be our client anymore. And yeah, so, that's a super that's a super important point. Yeah, go ahead and finish your thought. No, I was just saying, you know, that's just the there there are there are two sides to the communication thing. Hopefully, we're doing a good job on the front end that we never get the angry client scenario. But sometimes the client will come at you out of the gate. You know, that's their communication style. And it's like, ah, oh, we can't yeah. work with that. So just like you said, that person was gonna gonna leave her company because they didn't like the communication style of her engineer. It can also go the other way, but hopefully these are these are rare scenarios that happen. Yeah, as a as a leader, it's important too to kind of analyze what Amy is saying. You know, go back. You know, always um, you know trust but verify. So when you get feedback like that from a client, go back and interview the people involved. Listen to the recordings. You know, if you got it on camera or voice recording, please go back and listen to that because. Many of the times, back to Amy's point, you know, it wasn't something the engineer said; it was something the client said. And uh, in clients, remember the old school training we've been through, Amy, either in sales or customer service. The customer's always right. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. And it's uh, I've seen it happen in organizations where the owner would step in and contact the client and say, "Hey, please um, listen. This is the final warning. You can't talk to my people like that." And, uh, you know, and if, if you can't speak professionally to my team, then you're going to have to find another MSP to work with because we're not, I'm not going to let my team be subject to that or just fire the client. And, um, you know, it's, a in, interesting, interesting thing. I, I, you don't see that all too often, but, uh, I think it's important to stick up for your team. Like Amy's saying, um, so what else is happening in the news? There's some interesting things out there. I saw some things on the Microsoft licensing. What what well, did you hear about them? Yeah. Microsoft broke their, their own rule, which I had just quoted to somebody just the other day. And then I read this article and, and here it is breaking the rule. So the rule of thumb for Microsoft <laughs> licensing is always that the license applies to the person. And in the case of 365, not to the tenant. Mm -hmm. Right. So I get asked the question a lot like, oh, well, do I need a, a an Azure P2 license for everybody or can I just get one and then everyone gets access to to all the features like, no, nope, you need one for everybody. Um, however, <laughs> they just they just broke this rule on me with Windows 365, which is their uh, hosted uh, desktops in the cloud. Hmm. And they came out with something called. Windows 365 for frontline workers and frontline workers are your people that are, uh, you know, customer facing, say in a retail scenario or even in a construction worker scenario or restaurant scenario, uh, you know, things like that. Um, it all, but it also can apply to any part time worker. So what Microsoft did with this is they said, for $42, which is the entry level pricing, it gets you a machine that I don't remember what the processor is, but it's like, I think it's four cores, four gigs of RAM, 64 gig hard drive, something like that, a basic, basic machine. But remember, they're going to be using it for Windows 365 hosted SaaS apps. So hmm. not a client server architecture. So the, the, the client PC doesn't do much work anyhow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they'll access, they'll access that through the browser. And, um, what they did was for that $42 a month, you get three licenses and they apply to your tenant. Hmm. So anyone can use that at a time and you can have make different profiles. So if you have different types of workers or a person that moves between different job roles, okay. you can, they can have 
three different machines pre-configured for them for that particular job role. And any person in your company can hop into that, hop into that machine and work. Wow. Um, and so, well, here's their, here's the caveat on that though, is say you buy 10 of these, um, that gives you 30 Windows machines to work with. However, only 10 can be on at once. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you've got 30 machines with as many different provisioning profiles, they call them basically, you know, the pre-configured how you want the desktop and apps to be, but only 10 of them can be on at a time. So it really is meant for people that are part-time workers that don't need them don't need a machine all day long. Yeah. Um, but it's a, a lot of built-in flexibility. So it's, 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 it's a pretty interesting product that they've come mm. up with, I think. Well, leave it, leave it to Microsoft to figure out a new revenue stream on licensing uh, as if the licensing wasn't confusing enough. Here's another option, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it's Microsoft's curse of being all things to all people is, you know, somebody <laughs> convinced them, one of their large enterprise customers, I'm sure, convinced them that this was the licensing scheme that that they needed. And so, so here it is today. Hey, I also wanted to follow up on what we talked about um, last week, uh, which was um, whether People, whether it's better for people to work in the office or remote or hybrid. And I, yeah. I just saw a new poll out from Gallup. And um, they said they were talking, the poll was to see how connected the workers feel, right? Hmm. And that's an issue, right? We talked about when you're remote, yeah. you have to do a lot more work to make people feel like they're part of your corporate culture. But interesting really interesting survey so if you're fully remote they found 28 percent of the staff felt like they were fully connected to the company's purpose okay. if you were high if you were fully in the office only 33 percent felt like they were fully connected to the business's purpose and those are people that are in the office 100 percent of the time and only yeah. a third of them feel like they're really connected with the business. And interestingly, the people that were hybrid, 35% felt huh. like they were they were connected. So the hybrid workers are feeling more connected to the company's purpose than people that are in the office or people that are fully remote. But really the numbers are kind of pathetic for all three. <laughs> it's yeah, pointing that's... pointing to a huge huge corporate culture problem uh, you know just in in general but i still found those statistics very very interesting and i have a feeling that the numbers came out better for the hybrid workers because the workers themselves are having to work at it and understand the company that they work for better in, to, in order to manage their remote working time and their in the office time and how yeah. they interact with people. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people I've talked to about that on purpose looked forward to coming back to the office and they liked the idea of the hybrid where they're splitting time. Um, and I also think your mindset or your attitude when they get to do that, when they get to choose, or you know, maybe I, I choose what two days I'm there or three days I'm there and, and uh, working remote and so forth. I think that mindset, maybe they're happier you know, so they, they try harder to stay connected. I, I I wonder if that's part of it, but I love that statistic. That's, that's, that's interesting to me that the hybrid is the one who feels the most connected statistically. Yep. I thought it was really good stuff, but I mean, 35% <laughs> isn't exactly stellar. I mean, to think that that's the, the best that businesses are doing right now is kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's the uh, a topic for next week to talk about. You know, how do you, as a leader in your business, make your employees feel connected to the business, to the vision? You know, we're kind of just talking about that with EOS, right? Creating the business plan of the business. Here's the ten year plan, and here's where everybody fits in. And then there's a like a weekly update to give everybody updates of how they're doing. Um, some that people part do about, yeah, that part about how they fit in. That's the part that 
so many management teams forget, right? The management team goes off and, you know, builds the plan and the management team goes off and, you know, has their their meetings and, you know, and the the workers get have no idea what's going on, right? <laughs> they just right. kind of get left behind. They maybe get an email. Yeah. Yeah, it's um I've been part of several companies that really grew uh, you know, from small to really big quickly. And uh, it's something that I, I can see happening very easily where you kind of lose touch with your with your team. And you just have to be very deliberate and communicate well. Um, you know, listen, you know, your most important asset of our business, we're in the service business, right? Our most important asset that isn't on the balance sheet is our people. Yeah. And, um, you know, we think of how much money and time and effort goes into recruiting and training these people. And then they sometimes they kind of get forgotten and we don't plug them in and we don't stay uh, connected. But uh, anyway, and it gets harder the more and more people you have working remote or as you grow and you've got uh, additional offices. Uh, but I think back to your point, you just have to be more deliberate with uh, communicating with everybody and, and helping people stay connected. So interesting. I, I see a big opportunity there. So for us to improve that statistic. I as do a, too. As a, yeah, mm -hmm. as an owner or leadership team, for sure. So yeah, there was a, I know we always talk about the economy. I, I read an article from that Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, you know, made the national news again, you know, as if he isn't popular enough. But I remember seeing it all over the the media over the weekend about, you know, he is predicting more of a, a housing bubble where the rising interest rates are, they just keep going up and there's more and more people struggling of, of making their you know, commercial mortgage payment on their building or their house payment on their home. And it was more of a residential uh, prediction. But, uh, you know, again, what are you seeing, Amy? Because I always think of when I read articles like this, they're talking about more of the national economy. And then I always think of my local economy. And my local economy is my customer base, everybody that I talk to. And I'm, I think both you and I have customers all around the country but uh, what are you seeing inside your circle? Uh, you know, inside inside my circle, uh, business is booming. Everyone is everyone is doing well, and everyone is though nervous about the talk they're hearing and sort of wondering when it's going to hit them. Yeah. Um, but I haven't found anybody who's actually struggling in their in their business yet. But it's interesting that you talked about the um, the housing. Um, situation we ha we have not really solved our our housing dilemma right we had a we had sort of a big collapse in new housing builds for almost mm -hmm. you know like a, a decade because we really lost a a generation of builders yeah and um and because of that no you know the new housing starts were just incredibly low because there was there's nobody to build them <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so now we have just crazy demand for the existing housing stock, uh, which is driving prices up. And then at the same time, the you know the Fed re raised interest rates to uh, stave off a, a recession, which, in my opinion, seems to seems to have worked at least locally. We're not seeing those signs of of recession at all. Mm -hmm. Everybody's booming in in business is good, um, but uh, and I, and I thought I read recently that the Fed was done raising interest rates. They thought they had reached their their pinnacle, so mm -hmm. you know maybe maybe we'll start to see them them come back down a little as you know things sort of stabilize. I hope, although you know I will say the jaded side of me, um, the jaded side of me. Uh, has little sympathy for for high mortgage rates because I bought my my first house in the the late 1980s where the interest rate was 14 percent so <laughs> a little yeah more than more than double what it is today and, yeah uh, you know we you would you muddle you muddle through right <laughs> yeah you just 
you, you do the best with what you have, you know, you figure out a, a way. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, inside my circle, same thing. Pipelines are up, sales are up, people are doing really well. And I'm not seeing the struggle. I, I will say the consumer confidence, you know, the uncertainty, and I think some of that clearly is coming from the media. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. So people maybe are a little indecisive or a little bit more conservative with their spending than maybe what they they normally would do. But most all my clients are all hiring people right now and, and trying to expand. So that's interesting. Yeah. I just wanted same. to bring that up again. Same, same. I you know, I, I think in a we're approaching an election year and uh there's always, you know, so much negativity that that happens in an election year with advertising as everyone tries to distinguish yeah. themselves from the other person that may that may drive down consumer confidence as well as they keep getting those negative messaging, you know, hitting them all the time. But, yeah. uh, you know, just keep doing, keep doing what we're doing. And I, I think, uh, you know, I think the, the future seems, seems pretty bright. I don't see any looming crisis ahead at all, really. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. Uh, the fastest way to get to your goals is focusing on your goals, right? Not paying attention to what happened behind you or on your left or your right. So yep. couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and everybody, thanks for listening in on the SMB Community Podcast. Uh, be sure to subscribe, like, follow, engage. And if there's any questions that you have, uh, submit those off our website, smbcommunitypodcast.com. Uh, We'd love to hear from you and answer the questions that you have. And until next time, sayonara. Sayonara.